Welcome, everybody. My name is Don Fusen, and I'm the current president of People to People, uh, an organization that's probably not as well known as we would like it to be, but uh, we certainly are welcoming new members and want to share some of the cultural opportunities with you all. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, this particular year, yeah, we're starting yeah. out uh, earlier with Joan, the membership committee, and and the uh, military committee, who just are in the process of sponsor or uh, letting us know about our next year sponsors, and we're trying trying to take a, an extraordinary amount of time with our new sponsors, our returning sponsors, to make sure that the organization is going to uh, meet your own personal expectations, but also make you aware of the expectations of the Army and the overall program. Uh, the Kansas City People to People group is certainly one that wants to share, above all, cultural opportunities and just getting to know people around the world. We can't travel as much, so we take advantage of the uh, Fort Leavenworth people that bring in all of these countries from around the world, and not only the individual country that you might be sponsoring this year, but also their friends and other, other countries and other sponsors that you'll meet over time. It's great. Uh, my wife and I have sponsored since 1999, and we've had about 23, 24 different countries. There have been some countries uh, who've been assigned and then failed to appear because they do not process, they did not graduate from the Defense Language Institute in San Antonio, where a lot of our non-dominant English speakers are and have been for the last three months. They will all be coming up. You'll hear a little bit more about those dates in just a minute. Uh, we moved here in 1992 with AT&T, and I expected to be here about three years and then be back to New Jersey or someplace, but one thing led to another, and I, I retired from Germany, and after about three months back home, I saw this little article in the paper about another family who had opened their home through people to people and were talking about the experiences with those families, and so we joined up. It's It's a great, great opportunity. We are strictly a volunteer organization, and uh, I, I've tried to raise the amount of pay that uh, the group would give to Joan and to Sharon, but to no avail. So uh, we'll continue on with our strictly volunteer organization. However, that being said, you know as well as we do that sometimes it's difficult to communicate or to guide other volunteers. So it's like a herding cats. So just uh, we're welcoming you into the litter if that's the case. Um, the, the military folks coming in here, it is a feather in each of their caps to be selected for a year at Fort Leavenworth. Uh, some countries allow their, their, uh, their officers to actually stay a second year for an advanced course, but most of the countries are one year here. The military will call it the best year of their lives. Some come as unaccompanied bachelors, of course, some come as unaccompanied uh, married folks, but their their family does not come. Sometimes the families come in the summer, a great time to meet and to greet the whole family. And uh, other times the uh, the whole family is able to come. My current officer, who's, who's already whining about having to leave, uh, is from Malaysia. The wife uh, is a finance banker and was able to take the year off having her, her job uh, kept open for her. Their seven and 10 year olds have been in school speaking English and coaching everybody and done very, very well. And uh, the wife and the whole family and everything, it's just been a wonderful opportunity for them. Uh, they're mostly majors in the military parlance. You'll hear more about that and some Lieutenant colonels coming in. So a wide variety of experiences behind them and certainly these are uh, future leaders in their own uh, military, uh, res respectively, for their countries. And again, a very high honor to be able to go and take this school. So that's the background. We want you to have a great time. We want you to uh, feel uh, that, that you're meeting some new friends, uh, both American and also international, uh, exposing you to some of the Army regulations to get you onto the fort and all that good stuff, but those are easily overcome. And uh, we'll just check in with you during the course of the year. And hopefully at the end of this first year, you would say, I don't know why we waited so long to have done this, or we're so glad in some cases we're able to be returning uh, to sponsoring after a break in our service. 
So with that little bit of background, I'll let uh, Joan, you go ahead and take it from here, if you will, please. Well, thank you. All right. Um, my name is Joan. Uh, oops, I don't think it's showing, is it? No, not yet. Yes, it is. Um, my name is Joan Barrett. Um, I have been with my husband, a sponsor with People to People for 16 years. Um, and we have been delighted with every, um, almost every uh, officer we've sponsored. We've spent time, we've been been able to see some um, a second time when they've been back to the States to visit. Um, and so we, we have just been really delighted with our years as sponsors. And each of us, I think, have signed up to be a sponsor for with a different set of expectations. And it will be a, it will be a lot of fun to spend time with each of you as we get to know you through this year and find out what your initial expectations were and making sure we hope that your expectations are being met. But, you know, this is just a very quick overview of the kinds of um, advantages we hope that you'll get from sponsoring. You know, that first of all, that sense, renewed sense of pride in our country and a pride in our own Kansas City community, which we think is great. Um, a real appreciation of global diversity and a unique and the unique cultures that um, our officers will bring with them um, when they're here. And of course, we make new friends around the globe, which is phenomenal. But we also make friends with the people that we're sponsoring with, like all of you, um, the people to people sponsors, as well as those who are um, sponsoring from the military side and also the Leavenworth Lansing sponsors. You know, as um, there's always, um, as we're talking about uh, sponsoring, there, there are always um, expectations of what is it, what's expected of you. Um, and so we want to share a few of those things with you right now as well. And I think those six, uh, six words um, in red on this chart probably sum it up best. Um, we really hope that, uh, uh, that you will offer these officers your friendship, that's just number one, and probably the the most um, the the best overall description is offering that your friendship. We hope that you'll introduce them to our Kansas City community, that you'll introduce them to your family and your family traditions and your family holidays, if that's appropriate, uh, your family food, and of course, we hope you'll take the time to learn about their. Uh, traditions and, and family and food as well. Um, one of the biggest questions we get um, with new sponsors um, is basically how often can we see them? And the rule of thumb is that we try to connect with them at least once a month. More in the beginning when they're brand new, when they first arrived in June, and we'll talk a, a little bit more about that later, uh, but uh, we hope that you'll see them about one once a month. And that really includes a variety of things, as you see on that chart. That means attending events on post that are designed specifically for them um, and for us inclusively. Um, it means um, you and your, your officer and maybe some other sponsors and other officers doing activities around the Kansas City community. It means things in your home, bringing them into your home. Again, possibly for holidays, certainly for meals if you can, and hopefully they will reciprocate and you will spend time in their homes. Um, there sometimes, especially in the middle of the winter, when they are extremely busy with their studies um, and it's difficult to drive, perhaps, um, if, you know, those overly busy months, sometimes just a couple of phone calls back and forth to check in and make sure they're OK would be sufficient. But we'd love for you to keep in contact with them at least once a month. You know, and a, a stumbling block for a lot of us is how to effectively communicate with them. Uh, 
there's a lot of cultural and generational differences. Um, I know I see myself as a supreme emailer. I spend a lot of time on email, but we all know that the generation and two generations down from us don't really spend as much time on email. They much prefer texting. And with our international officers, they really prefer to use WhatsApp. And if you don't know WhatsApp yet, you will probably by the beginning of the um, the academic year. And we can talk more about that later if you have questions about that. But they prefer uh, more of a quick texting kind of environment rather than email. Um, so we all learn that um, perhaps our first foray or our first attempt to contact them uh, may not be quite as smooth as we want it to be. So we suggest that you contact them probably by email the first time, although you'll probably also get their, uh, their um, U.S. Uh, uh, cell phone number as well, so you could call them, but that you find out from them their preferred method of, of communication so that you know that you are able throughout the year to continue to make contact with them in a way that they're comfortable. Um, we all find, because English is not their first, not everyone's first language, that we find that uh, Sending invitations, um, and offering them um, the opportunity to get together is probably best done in writing. And in writing, I don't mean, you know, uh, writing a note necessarily, but in WhatsApp or in a text message or if they're amenable in an email to put down exactly what you want um, in writing because that gives them time to look at it to process it, and then to clarify what they may not understand. Um, while we're talking about getting together with them, we really kind of need to throw out a caution here, and that is that we need to understand their time constraints and then eventually your own as well. But let's talk about theirs first. They're here to be students, and so that's where they are going to spend their time. Um, and many of them are also getting a master's degree while they're here, while they're here that requires additional study above and beyond the norm um, of their everyday studies at the Command and General Staff College. So consequently, they are really slammed for time. Um, they're really in a crunch. And I just want you to think for a second, think about getting a master's degree in a foreign language and then doing it in a foreign culture at the same time. I just can't even imagine how that might work. Um, kind of a side note here, if their families are here, it's possible that their spouse and children could feel a little left out or a little lonely during these heavy academic times. So I hope you'll keep them in mind um, as uh, not just the officer, but the family as well. Keep them in mind. And perhaps during a really heavy academic time, you could take the spouse and the kids out for dinner or as an aside. So um, that's, that would be um, a a great way to, to alleviate some of the stress on both sides. Um, and I'll, one other thing, they are here with many of their peers from across the world and the U.S. students. And so they're going to make a lot of friends. They also will have two other sets of sponsors, one from the military and one from Leavenworth Lansing. And so consequently, they may have, in addition to their study calendar, they may also have a very busy social calendar. But then you need to consider yourselves too. You need to balance their time constraints with yours. Um, and we don't expect you to give up your travel, your family time, or any of those kinds of things. Um, we just want you to make sure that you are able to balance it and find a convenient time to get together with them. And when you're not available, just to let them know so that they are um, so that they're aware that you're not ignoring them, but that you're just somewhere else and um, aren't available. If you're talking about what to expect, we definitely need to also talk about what we don't expect. Um, and this, these are just a couple of little pointers. Um, we do not ever 
give or lend our officers money or expensive items like cars or computers. And that probably is a, a no brainer for all of us, but it is it does um, merit a conversation or at least a mention uh, because we have had um, not many, but over the many years of sponsoring, we've had a couple of situations that have become a little awkward. So lending them things like, um, let's say, a used, an unused bike that's out in your garage, that's, that's fine, or a stroller, kids' toys that are in your basement, that's fine, not a problem at all. Paying for an occasional meal um, or an activity is a good thing, but please remember to be cautious because they may feel that they're required to, um, to reciprocate in kind, and many of them are not in a position to be able to do that. So you just kind of have to feel your way through that situation. And again, I'm going to repeat here, even though it probably is um, not necessary, but I want you to be sure that you are not supposed to, one of the not expectations for you is not uh, to expect that um, you will ever give up your own time. And then one final note about these expectations. Um, just like everything we do in life, um, there may be a situation where there's a little blip in the road, um, maybe a personality issue with the officer or his spouse, or perhaps there's a mismatch in your community, your expectations and their expectations. Um, that happens in every relationship, uh, relationship. but certainly you want to rely on your own personal skills to navigate through whatever may happen, but also be aware that um, there are people on our board, um, your military committee, um, you will have a contact on your military on the military committee, but better yet, we hope that you will have a that you will choose to have a mentor and that that mentor will be someone that you go to and say, um, I'm having a little bit of a problem here. What would you suggest? Hopefully that will not happen, but we want you to know that there is support um, through the people to people uh, board, through the mentors and through our committees to make sure that whatever blips in the road um, can be ironed out. But no matter what, we hope that you will continue to be persistent about connecting with your officer. Um, so we love that. And now it's time, I think, that we should probably talk about some of the nuts and bolts. So Sharon, are you there? I am here. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome. Um, my name is Sharon Velashik. I'm the military um, coordinator or liaison to, to Fort Leavenworth for our organization. Uh, my, um, well, between my husband and I, we've been sponsoring for about, about 25 years, so quite a while now. Um, so it's, we do a lot of volunteering, and this is this is our favorite um, because of some of the reasons already mentioned and getting to know and understand people from all around the world. So it's it's a wonderful um, experience. So um, you've heard a little bit already about the, the commitment, time commitment. Um, I think that's one of the biggest concerns that that I, in my experience, that new sponsors have expressed, you know, what is, are we going to be able to fit this into our schedule? Uh, how much time am I expected to be with these officers? So um, I will share a little, it's been mentioned already, but, um, and I'll go into some of the nuts and bolts here with the dates, um, which looks like a lot, but I, I'll explain more about the details. It I mean, not as overwhelming on the events um, as what it might look like on the screen there. Um, yeah. So, so you'll you'll want to, um, as Joan said, balance it out. And when the officers arrive, uh, the first couple months, and I'll go into the details there. That's the absolute perfect time to spend, if if at all possible, to spend more time getting to know them the the first couple of months, and then um, then you'll most likely have to have to dial that back a little bit because they're going to get really busy with their studies. So. Um, the, um, if you, I'm going to 
also cover the things that are hosted by the fort and uh, our IMSD, International Military Student Division. So those are the um, events here listed in red. And if you would think of those as kind of built-in opportunities rather than requirements or obligations, although we do ex expect, if at all possible, that you go to these events, um, think of it as a built-in opportunity, something where you don't necessarily have to think of an event for um, to involve your officer and they're already built in and you will get inv invitations uh, to most of those events at, uh, from from uh, IMSD, from the invitations by email. So first up uh, on the list here is our sponsor briefing. Um, I want to um, set you at ease that you hopefully you're not um, busy taking a lot of notes and trying to absorb all this tonight um, because you don't have to because you'll hear it again <laughs> um, at our sponsor briefing. This is just a special um, a special session that we wanted to hold specifically for new or mostly new sponsors. Um, but you'll hear all of this again on Monday, June 3rd. And then also, um, in addition to, to the content tonight, we, we will have representatives there from Fort Leavenworth, from, from the International Military Student Division, probably Mr. Jim Fain and Mr. David Bourne. Um, I don't know exactly who's coming, but it most likely will be those um, two gentlemen. They're going to they they will say that their number one objective for speaking to our to us is manage expectations to so that you know what to do what not to do how much you know how much time is involved they'll they'll go through all of those um particulars on at sponsor briefing that's where you'll also receive information about the other two sponsors and more information about your um if we don't haven't already sent it beforehand, information specifically about your officer and uh, his or her contact information. Um, there is an informal um, potluck picnic on June 12th at Weatherby Lake. That's that's just for for us for sponsors to gather and uh, get to know one another and enjoy a meal. Um, and that's um, sponsored by one of our 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 uh, members, Nancy and Bill Quitmeyer. We think that the officers will, most of them will arrive on June 17th. And so let me explain what most means. Um, as Don mentioned, most of the officers, the majority um, go through the DLI, the Defense Language Institute in San Antonio. And that's because um, they their English proficiency is perhaps not up to speed as to uh, uh, regard with regard to what's required to, to participate in the course. So this is a way that the Army helps the students who've been selected to, to take a crash course, if you will, on, on uh, English language. And so they spend a few weeks in San Antonio. There's probably about 80 or more. This is a rough estimate because we don't have exact numbers. So about 80 of the 120 officers most likely will be coming from San Antonio to Kansas City, and they will arrive most likely on that day uh, when we have the specific information. When If we do have it, um, we don't always get all the information, but um, we'll share it with, with each of the sponsors. Um, some officers um, don't require that course, and so they may come sooner. They can't come later than that, but they may come sooner. Maybe they, um, you know, come from a perhaps a more well-off country, and they want to spend a couple of weeks traveling around the U.S. before they have to report at Fort Leavenworth. So what, the the point being, once you get, uh, once we give you information about how to contact your officer. You'll want to ask him or her, when are you arriving? When are you planning to arrive in, at, uh, in Kansas City? And then, importantly, um, try to meet the officer, especially if they're flying in, um, try to meet the officer at the airport. It's really, really important to have that first impression to be one of the first people that they meet. They may have been on a long flight. They may be tired. Um, and of course, a lot of them, most of them have never been to Kansas City before. More of them have been to the U.S. Uh, than in the past, but there's not many officers that have ever been to Kansas City before. So 
Uh, this will, so it's a new environment and they may have been on a long flight. If you greet them at the airport, uh, we recommend a small gift, which can be, you know, some cheese and crackers and a couple bottles of water or granola bars. It doesn't need to be anything, um, anything very substantial, but uh, just a, a nice gesture and putting for them to begin connecting with you, putting putting a face and a name both ways for you to meet your officer and for them to uh, to meet you. And then uh, fo following the arrival, um, the, the Army hosts uh, icebreakers, and that's for all three sets of sponsors, including children. Um, you will attend based on the country you're assigned. So um, there's four different nights um, and you'll um, you'll get to know the other sponsors then if you haven't already, and you'll have a chance to get to know your officer even more. One of the most important things that's done at the icebreaker is to decide which of the three events. So if you, if you look over on the right side there, it says one of the three on post social events. So those are three events, but you'll attend one of them. The other sponsor, sponsors will attend the other two. So one from Operation International and one a sponsor from Fort Leavenworth. So you'll decide at that icebreaker which of which of those uh, three events work best for you. And if you pick one and you know something happens later where you have to you can't make it, you can swap with the other sponsors. That would be the first first priority is to find find a the the a swap date uh, with the other sponsors for one of the other, um, either the, you know, if you chose fall food fair, either the holiday dinner dance or the spring food fair, you do have to pick something that evening because the officer is required to turn in that sheet to uh, IMSD after the icebreaker of which sponsor is attending which of those events. On July 27th, that's another um, event that's hosted by our chapter. Um, we're doing some volunteer work and at Heart to Heart International, packing some some kits and and also just sharing time with one another. So that that is, um, you know, that's not anything associated with the fort, but it's something that uh, is an opportunity for us to get to know each other more as uh, fellow sponsors. And then I touched on this already, but that from the time of arrival, June 17th, up till the time of the flag ceremony is the absolute ideal time to establish the foundation. From the time you meet them at the airport on June 17th, um, take, take advantage of their lighter schedule during that period of time. Not quite two months, but you know, six about six weeks there. Um, I think this year we may have met four or five times with our officer during that period. Um, they be they begin to get really busy with with their studies after that, so um, I just can't emphasize that enough. Um, and then I've already covered the on post social events all the way at the end of their the school year next year, May thirtieth. That's when the IMSD hosts a sponsor recognition and a farewell gathering. That's where all sponsors are included. And then the following week will be the badge ceremony when um, when the officers. Um, receive their their certificate for completing the course. Uh, next slide. All right. So um, the 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 post for Leavenworth is um, is a, a secure post. So. Um, you are unless you have an uh, unless you have military credentials or a military ID, um, you you can't get on on post. Uh, you can't just go up to the gate and say I'm here to see my officer. You have to um, have uh, you have to have authorization. So uh, our, the Army has made available to our sponsor organization um, and to the uh, OI Operation International organization as well. They got special um, approval to make available a one-year pass, uh, one-year access card that we apply for every year in February. And then it's good from the end of February. It's good for a whole year, February to February. 
um, except for you that are you spot uh, any sponsors here that are first year. You, of course, you didn't you didn't you weren't here in February, so yours will be good from the time it's completed. Now, let's say end of May or June um, until February, and then we start gathering information again through for that same process in December. So we'll be Pat Burnett and I will be asking for you to uh, submit your application again. And then when you go through that, then you'll be on the the, the cycle where your pass will be good for the whole year. Uh, we notify you, there's a whole process on, on our website. And also um, we also put, um, we detail the process out in our uh, one of our communication tools, MailChimp, which I'll cover in a minute. Um, so it, there's a, it's a pretty detailed process, but um, it's it's pretty well documented, and um, we can Pat and I can answer any questions. If you don't do the one year pass, which we do recommend, there is another way to get on post, and that is with a temporary pass. That's for if you want to get on post one time for one of these events then you can fill out a, a online a temporary pass. They they um, ask you the questions if you get approved. I mean, they ask you the questions online. You get approved and then the authorization is tied to your ID. So when you come to the, the gate to get on post, they'll, they will validate if you've been uh, approved for that temporary pass. And if so, then you'll be allowed on post. So those are the two ways that you, you can get access to Fort Leavenworth. Um, so I talked a little bit about the MailChimp. So our primary communication is MailChimp. That's a, a, a mail pro, MailChimp program uh, where we do like a broadcast message to all sponsors. If there's something that's specific to a particular sponsor, like you've recently received your, your, uh, your country assignment, um, or when Pat and I communicate about your LAC, um, that's done with individual by individual email. So the MailChimp is is if we are um, communicating something to our the whole audience. And then uh, let's see, next slide, or is that the last one? Oh, that's it. Um, let me <laughs> let me cover the last couple of points then. Um, on back on the communication. Um, some of the, I mentioned this, but some of the events um, that you're invited to, mm -hmm. those will come by email from the fort. So it'll be it'll be the name of an individual at Fort Leavenworth at in, with the, it's part of the International see. Military Student Di Division. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. Signed up for the spring food fair. When it's time for that event, a few weeks in advance, they're going to to remind you that this is your event and to please RSVP because they want to make sure that um, everybody who has signed up to come to an event is in fact going to come to that event that you've that you've committed to coming to. So so it'll be email, um, it'll be MailChimp and um, pro email from one of us on the committee and then uh, email from the fort and then MailChimp. Those are our primary. And of course we do we do occasionally pick up the phone Joan is very good about, about she, she, I think she, all of you that are new, you've probably received a phone call from Joan. So we also use the plain old telephone as well. Um, lastly, I wanted to ask, um, Joan touched on this, but um, if you are interested, I think Joan will want to know, and I don't know if she wants to cover that um, on the call here, right on the meeting right now, or if she wants, or if she wants you to contact her, but she will want to know if you're interested in having a mentor. And again, it's um, it is it's not required, um, but we just want to make it available. We've had about ten of our current experienced sponsors step up and um, say that they're interested and they're willing to help new sponsors if if you're interested. So um, we recommend it because they you can you can ask them you know maybe something that you're uh, too shy about asking in front of a whole group or just, you know, somebody um, that you just want to say, hey, is this a good idea to do this? Or I need some ideas about an event or something's happening with my officers that what, how do I handle it? That sort of thing. So I think that's it for me. Um, I am going to turn it back to Joan to for the next next steps. 
Well, good. Thank you, Sharon. Um, well, this is the time when we want you to ask what, what the questions you have. And um, you've got some very, pretty, very ex experienced sponsors that have joined us for this uh, call. So we hope that amongst all of us, we can answer your questions uh, pretty well. Um, I'm going to stop sharing these slides. And I do want to say, Sharon, I didn't fall asleep on the job there. The, the cursor was stuck somehow. So I didn't figure you fell asleep. Yeah, I was, but sometimes I feel like I, I'm um, not very responsive. But so if you would like to unmute yourselves um, and um, just go ahead and ask away anything that crosses your mind. We've got some very experienced uh, uh sponsors here and we've got a couple of pretty new but really good sponsors with us so um please ask away anything that you are interested in yes this is scott garrett i'd like to know um what if we can't make the icebreaker so if you that seems like a very important one that kind of gets us into like the the events and stuff like that yeah i'll i'll, uh, I'll be happy to answer that so two things, um, don't, don't worry. I mean, there, not everybody will be able to make every event. Um, two, two things I would recommend. First of all, um, you, there's time from the time your officer arrives until the icebreaker. There's at least a two week, three week period in there. Be sure to meet with your officer prior to the ice. And then you, you'll, you'll kind of have had your own personal icebreaker and you might let your, um, you you also will want to make contact with the other sponsors so that you can say, you know what, I can't be there, but if if possible, I'd really like to attend the spring food fair. Do you are you are you other other sponsors okay with that? Or kind of if you know you can't be there, work work that out by email is what I would recommend. And then just, you know, get together with your officer after, you know, after the icebreakers as well. Okay. So I have a question about the icebreaker as well. Um, what is the time frame on that? I have a date, but I mean, it, do you have the times for that? We typically start at 6 p.m. Uh, I don't know if we have the time yet, but they typically start at 6 p.m. And, and they're held at Frontier Conference Center on post. Okay. You will receive some more information about that as, as in MailChimp as we get closer. Okay. Susan, they they also that also includes a dinner and um so it, it's a it's a, it's a whole event uh, the the whole idea being to to get to know your your officer and the other sponsors as well so and they do set up it's it's kind of the really the only event that except for the badge ceremony but that's a formal event it's kind of the only event where they where they really cater to kids too. They they have a little like a a bouncy house and balloon a balloon guy that goes around and makes the balloon figures and just they have some fun games for kids. So it's I definitely if you have children I definitely um, you know I, I encourage you to bring them uh, to the icebreaker. Absolutely. Before somebody asks another question, I wanted to introduce Pat Burnett. Um, who joined us, who is, um, you, you have seen her name, I am sure. Uh, she's one of our board members and you've seen her name because she is involved um, also in the military committee like Sharon and I are, um, but also uh, she's the one that will make sure that your um, your passes, your on post passes, the LACs are um, handled properly. So, and we also have Eric Schoenberg, who is one of our board members who is here. So um, I appreciate that. And Irina Pavlovich, I can never do that right, but, uh, um, and Irina is, is one of our outgoing board members, um, but is very involved and is serving as a mentor. So um, she's, a, a, she's somebody you wanna get to know, so definitely. And I hope I'm not missing any of our other uh, board members. And sure. so, 
it's good to have that all that experience here. And I'll be quiet and please ask any question that uh, may come up. Hey, this is Glenn Chaland. I got a question about uh, uh, are the uh, oh, get togethers. Is. I assume that there's going to be some sort of dress code. If you're former military, are you uh, required to wear a uniform or are you not? Or is it just uh, out of your choice? Our former military, um, Eric Schoenberg, is shaking his head no. I don't know if you can see that, but no. You are not required to wear um, a uniform at all. Um, so, Glenn, I would say um, if you do the holiday dinner dance, that is a formal event. And if you wanted to break out your old uh, mess dress, that's an opportunity to to do that. Um, otherwise, um no, no uniform is necessary in any capacity. Okay, but we can if we want. You can if you want to. If yeah, you're if you are free. entitled to wear it because you're a retiree, <laughs> you can right. feel free. Cool. Thanks. Can I also add also on your invitations? It will specify what sort of dress code is expected. So if it's a black tie, it will ex it will say that specifically, at least for the Fort Leavenworth oh, events. Yeah. And then uh, as far as our social events and other activities for people to people, uh, we're, we're very uh, free spirited. So it's whatever goes. <laughs> you, you can wear the suit or you can wear your shorts. We're OK with it. Yeah, you know, like, things like the icebreaker. I, I think they say it's business casual, but quite honestly, it's really more casual casual. I mean, ratty, ratty shorts and a T-shirt that's falling apart. Probably not the best impression. <laughs> But um doesn't take too much more than that to be uh, right there in the middle of the pack. It's funny when the, the concept of a mentor came up um, in the membership committee, um, it, one of the very first things they said is that new sponsors, if they don't have a military background, um, have no idea what some of this terminology re uh, re related to dress is all about and they need somebody to tell them how to how to dress <laughs> i i'm not sure that's quite true but it was it was an interesting concept i thought so yeah i i might be at the opposite end of the spectrum since i ended my career as an attache so you know I business know. casual to me is suit and tie <laughs> uh <laughs> and i'm i'm you know used to dressing in mess dress four times a week so well, Glenn, we'll we'll work hard to break you of that. How's that? <laughs> fair enough. We're just glad enough. you. We're glad that the two of you are are sponsoring with us. Thank you. Yeah, look, looking forward to it. Should be fun. Joan, um, how do we sign up um, for a mentor? We do we do that through email, or just tell you tonight, or you t and I have I have my list right here, so mm -hmm. I am definitely going to put you down, Susan. Okay, great. And Joan, you said before that uh, when you do get those mentors lined up, we try and you were we're going to try and do something close to where that person lives, so that if there's a face to face need, then it's easier than traveling across country. Or as we always say, those of us that live in the Northland, gee, we have to swim across the river to to get to Johnson County. So no, we will try to match you geographically as best we can. Uh, Joan, this is Peyton Kelly, and I'd also like to sign up for a mentor. Fantastic. Being Thank a first you. First timer, yeah. That's, why that's don't, great. Why don't why don't I suggest that people just send a chat to Joan? If you want to sign up for a mentor, just go ahead and put it in the chat. If you're comfortable with chat, please do. And otherwise, you can just yell your name if you want to. And if I haven't heard from you, I will send you an email to clarify. So anyway, more questions. Yes, this is Scott Garrett again. Um, Scott? Did the officers that were sponsoring have vehicles? I was waiting for yes. somebody. Almost yes, always. And yeah, yes and no. There are officers who live on post that never do get a vehicle, and so that becomes a little bit problematic. Uh, I've had officers, and I live in Leewood, 
and I've had officers that says, uh, you know, I want to have invite you to dinner, but I have to, you know, and go up, pick them up, bring them down. Or what I've done is to say, consider my home, your home, and I would like to invite you. And I'd like you to be able to invite a couple of your other officers to come with you. Hopefully one of them has a car. And so I've been able to entertain a couple more than just my one officer. And then I'll go back and find out what countries uh, he's invited and then perhaps invite one of those sponsors that might live near me to come over as well. So you can leverage that, Scott, but it is an issue. And in certain cases, we all are trying to be very helpful about them selecting a car. Uh, in past years, it's been difficult when there are no no rental, uh, no cars to turn over. Uh, one year, a couple of years ago, I had an officer that went on six uh, events, six, six trips, borrowing a car to go look at a car for him. And on five of them, he would got a text that says the car was already sold. And so it can be a difficult uh, market, market really bad. but it is an issue. Some of them will have a car and drive up from uh, uh, San Antonio or will have or their other cars that they purchased from their previous officer. But everyone's a little different, but it's a great thing to be aware of. Thank you for the question. I have a question. Uh, I'm Jane Ann Gorski, and this is actually my second year. But uh, my officer this past year was Canadian, so they drove in. I didn't meet them at the airport, and I sort of heard about it af sort of after the fact. Uh, and I thank God they drove in because I, I was confused about what to do. Uh, I was thinking, oh, we're, are we supposed to meet them at the airport and take them to Fort Leavenworth? Do they have transportation? Is it just a run in, hi and goodbye? What's that look like? Because yeah, I, I might have to do that this year and I didn't have to do it last year. Yeah, I, I didn't touch on that very well uh, when I said meet your air officer at the airport. So thanks for the question. That's um, okay. <laughs> so for the, let me answer the first part. Um, this is where having some communication with your officer first um, before that arrival date is is really good because then you'll find out, oh, we're, we're actually driving in on the 15th of June or some other right. day. And then you can you can meet them when, you know, soon, right away, if you can, I mean, give them a chance to drive in and get to their place. But within a couple, three days, um, if, if you're if they're not at the airport, I would make plans to meet right away. Um, okay. at the airport, if they're, if your officer is coming to the airport, um, at, we are not required uh, unless with a, with a bit of a caveat, we're not required to, uh, provide transportation to Fort Leavenworth. The, okay. the military has vans available. They have a notebook of everybody that's coming and they have people assigned to take them to, to wherever their either temporary or permanent housing is on post. Um, sometimes there's little glitches though, where, uh, uh, maybe a flight gets canceled, uh, mm -hmm. plans and officers plan changes at the last minute. Um, uh, we had an example yesterday, one of our sponsors, um, met his officer at the airport, but didn't find out about it until like a few hours before the officer was coming mm -hmm. Fort Leavenworth didn't know when the officer was coming. So <laughs> our sponsor took, took the officer to Fort to on post. Um, in the all the years that, that I've sponsored, we've only done it once. Um, if you really want to, you can. You you can say to the military um, person there from IMSD that's at the at the uh, airport, you can say, I really would like to take my officer and but but they need to know you can't just run away. You have to tell the person because otherwise they're going to be looking for this officer and their job is to make sure they account for all of these officers. Okay. So if you really have to or want to take your officer to Fort Leavenworth, you must let them know because they'll they're going to be looking all over the place for that, that officer until they find <laughs> him. But I would say it's typically not you don't need to worry about it. Okay. Um, but good question. Thank you. Thanks. Sure.
Very good. Thank you. Other questions? I was just answering one in the, oh, I think I, um, I was just answering a, a, a chat question. So oh. um, someone else, anything else that uh, strikes you as kind of um, didn't make sense or um, it, it just struck you as, as um, questionable or, or something that you're thinking, how am I going to do this? And just repeating one thing that Sharon uh, is excellent about reminding us all that says um, officer to officer, country to country, year to year, things are different. We're all flexible and we want to be open to what their expectations are, their needs, good communication, and then you run with it and build on it from there. Um, the, some of the English speaking countries will say we really don't have too much of a need for uh, a real sponsor, but right. you can engage them anyway in so social outlets and and family kind of things, which uh, which they'll get a ha hang of. Uh, last night, somebody said, "Do some of these officers go home at Christmas?" And most of them, if they're going anywhere, do do travel. They'll go to California, Florida, whatever. A few might go home, but mostly not. Mostly they'll stay around, or at least are here for a while. Some of them come back before New Year's uh, and just to prepare for the January curriculum effort. So again, it's something to be communicated with. What's your activity for a long weekend? Um, I have had uh, people drive to Denver, to Chicago, to Dallas, to Florida on a, a long weekend, uh, more than what I would do. But again, it's up to the individual officer and their families. So. I thought something we could do, go to Dallas. Yeah. Jane Ann, I saw you were nodding when he mentioned about the Canadian officer, um, you know, not sort of being independent and not feeling like they needed um, a whole lot of support. But, um, you know, we've also heard stories, um, actually two different people that I'm friends with this year um, talk about um, how if, if it were possible, they're, their uh, officer and family would spend every weekend up here in Kansas City with them. So, you know, we hope right. there's a happy medium, you know. Right. That, uh, so yeah. so just, just to throw out, a, it's an anecdote, but just because, uh, like, we had a Canadian officer several years ago, and uh, obviously they're very familiar with North American culture. They don't have any language concerns. Um, right. However, they had four boys, mm -hmm. and uh, and so the support that we gave them, other than just social support, was, you know, kind of helping, mostly helping Allison, the wife, um, survive, and uh, and find her way while her husband was extremely busy getting through the course, um, and and actually, it, my wife. I'm not suggesting anybody would do this, but my wife actually babysat for their four boys for a week while Allison, while Allison went on a trip with Ted, which there are sometimes the spouses are invited to go. Um, so uh, my wife actually moved into their house for a week and stayed with them um, and actually just repeated that in New Brunswick, Canada. Well, Ted and Allison went to a family wedding and my wife babysat their four boys again <laughs> in their home in New Brunswick back in Canada. So wow. um, uh, just because language isn't a problem, and even with the Canadians who are probably the closest culturally um, of any of the IMS um, students, um, doesn't mean that you can't develop a, a, a meaningful connection and a valuable connection for these folks. Yeah. Um but every, as as Joan said, every experience, as Don said, also every officer and his family is going to interact with you in a different way, um, and uh, and you um, just have to kind of feel that out and see see what works for the the pairing, you know. Um, if if they if you have a different officer or they had a different sponsor. The relationship was going to be different. So every time is a new experience. Every year is going to be a new experience. Um, so um, 
and it's uh, you, you will usually find that at the end of the year, um, um, they appreciate what you've done, even if you feel like you haven't connected with them as much as maybe you think Good. you would have liked to or should mm -hmm. have. Um, they recognize um, that you you put in effort and and you, you know it was all voluntary. So um, anyway. Well, if there are no other questions, um, we will close the meeting or the, the session, but I just wanted to say um, thank you so much for taking an hour out of your evening, um, for spending a little bit of time with us, for us getting to see you face to face. You're not just an email address. <laughs> or a voice on the phone, uh, which is great. And for those of you that will be at the um, the sponsor briefing, and we do, and I hope you understand this is not in lieu, coming tonight is not in lieu of the sponsor briefing. We still have high hopes that you'll be there if you can. I know if you cannot be, we'll be out of town, but, um, but, uh, we we really look forward to seeing you there and it'll be nice to be able to say, oh, I recognize you from your little square um, on Zoom um, and your wonderful voice and your good questions. So thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Yeah, I, I have one quick question here, Joan. Hey, Nathan. Um, will we at any point um, get kind of a course syllabus, maybe a schedule? of what their schedule looks like um, when those recesses are, when those busy periods are, so that we can kind of plan around that ahead of time, or is that something we've got to ask our our um, now, officer for? So we, we get that um, from IMSD, and we will share it. They'll, you'll, you're going to see the whole calendar, I believe, at the sponsor briefing, and then... Um, and it's it's available there, um, but also we after that we typically don't um, in our Mailchimp we'll list we'll list um, events that um, like if it's a big break their spring break or they're going to Gettysburg for their trip we'll list those kind of big blocks of time when the officers are going to be gone, but we don't list every every single event like. For example, they're going to be going to State Capitol Day in Topeka, and they may they'll go to they take them to I think um, Jazz Museum and the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. So we don't always list every single event that the officers have for the whole year. There might be like three hundred of them, <laughs> um, but we'll list. We'll list the major ones, and then you, you're always welcome to have that full calendar yourself. Um, we can certainly make that available, but we pick and choose certain things to put in our, otherwise the MailChimp would be a mile long every time we send it. I hope that but helps. It, yeah, and just to, to strengthen what Sharon's saying, it, it, communication with the individual officer is, again, uh, the most important thing you can do. With the size of this class, they have some of the trips that will be split into different weeks for the class. So that affects uh, the curriculum differently, depending upon uh, what split they normally split uh, activities by the name of their, their country, just the first half, last half. However, then you get involved in Ramadan, you get involved in some other things. And so some of those things will be overlaid and up to your individual officer to communicate with you about when they're in town, when they're not, when they're gone, and if there's any any help that they need. And remember, they are uh, they do have uh, other sponsors as well that can fill in some of that. Good question. Thank you for joining us. Um, you have all of our emails, um, email addresses. So uh, for Sharon and myself, Pat Burnett, um, Karen Haber, all of uh, Maggie Choplin, who are on the uh, military committee. So we would love to hear from you with your questions. I will get back to you um, about uh, 
the mentor program, but it will probably not be for another week and a half to two weeks because we I need to find out what all of the new sponsors prefer to do. And then we need to match you up with, with one of our mentors. Um, so um, again, if you would like one, I, I was able to pick up um, Susan, you go by Susie, right? Okay, um, I've got uh, Susie, I've got the Kellys, the Dentons, and the Mirrors. And um, your brother already signed you up for one, um, Chuck. So you're, <laughs> so you're, you were, you already had one, whether you knew it or not. But, um, and if anybody else wants one, you can just raise your hand now, or and or I will contact you. So uh, let us know. All right. If not, then we will close down the meeting and um, have a, a great rest of the, the night and can't wait to see you all in person. So take care. <laughs>